Hello, Scott here. Um, I want to go over today this plugin I wrote for Xscheduler. The plugin for Xscheduler allows you to drive color light cards directly from Xscheduler without needing like a Pi or anything in a bridge. Um, so I want to go over how to install it and how to set that up in Xschedule. The first kind of requirements of it, you have to be running Xschedule 2020.25 or above. And right now it's only uh, Windows only. So all the DLLs and everything are only work on Windows. So the first thing you need to do is uh, go to my GitHub here. There's a Colorlight plugin. I'll put a link in the description for this, but you need to download the plugin from GitHub. Easiest way to do that is to click the releases over here and then it'll show the different versions of the plugin I've released. The newest one here, V3, just download the releases zip here under assets. Once you download it, um, you just need to take these DLL files from this zip file and put them in your Xlights install directory. So um, the most common on most computers, if you're running 64-bit, it'll be under C program files Xlights. If not, it might be C program files x86 for older versions but um, for most people it'd be c program files here and you would just take these dlls and drag them over to your directory um, i've already installed this before so you probably won't get this error but if you do just hit replace and then you'll get a permissions warning because you're trying to go to c program files so just hit continue and with that it'll copy all the dlls you need for the plugin the main one is this color light plugin DLL and then there's some dependencies for the low-level drivers. Uh, once you do that you should be able to open up X schedule and there will be an option in X schedule now for the color light plugin once it comes up here. So in X schedule if you go to plugins now there's this color light plugin and if we enable this option you'll get this plugin. And at first, you'll get some warnings here. So, how the plugin works, it actually uses uh, matrices or matrix size that are defined in X schedule. So, in X schedule, you must first define a matrix, and then this will use the settings from the matrix, and it'll take the data from that, how you configure it in X schedule, and then push it out to your color light card. So, let's just do that. Under edit here, there is these matrices, and this is where you need to define your matrix. And this has to match what you have set up in X lights. So I have X lights here. I have a P5 panel. It's 196 or 192 by 192. And so let's set that up. We'll add, we'll just call it P5. Uh, the number of strings, this will be the 192. So this is the height of your matrix. So in my case, it's 192. Uh, the string length, this is the width of your matrix. So mine is also 192. Uh, strings for strand, you just keep that the same. Just keep it at one. And then the start channel, this is what's kind of critical, is this start channel has to match your start channel in X lights. So in X lights, our start channel is 15,745. So 15,745. And below here, this is the starting location of your panel. This needs to match X lights as well, which in our case is top left. And the orientation, um, this needs to be horizontal. So since this the horizontal kind of means the strings go side to side and it has to be horizontal for P5 matrices and P10s. So we'll hit OK. Um, I did P, let's fix that. I hit the shift key. So let's call it P5. That should be OK. And it will not show up in here immediately. So we need to disable the plugin and then we can re enable it again. And now that P5 is available in the dropdown. And once we set it, these errors should kind of go away. It'll stop producing. And the other settings in here that we need to set, the second dropdown, this is the Ethernet adapter that you have plugged into your color light card. 
So if you hit the drop down here, it'll show all of the Ethernet adapters or networking adapters on your computer. So the first one, that's my my standard Ethernet adapter on the motherboard that's plugged into my home network. Then the second one here is a USB to gig Ethernet adapter that I have plugged into my panel. So that's the one I want to select. And once I do that, that's basically most of the settings you need to set. There's also a brightness setting that allows you to set how bright you want the panel. I'll just put it at 50 for now. And we'll have to hit save. And once we hit save, it'll update all these settings here and this should match. It'll get all this data from the X schedule matrix settings that we put in and it will match 192 start channel. And then it calculates the number of channels based on your height and resolution. And uh, once we do that, there is this test mode button. And if we enable that, I have a camera on my um, P5 here. It'll just start doing RGB on the matrix. So this is kind of a good sign that uh, it's showing. And like if we want to adjust the brightness, we could put this at 10 and hit save. And it'll actually dim down the brightness. You can see it dim down a little there. So that's the uh, basics of the plugin. Um, you can turn off test mode. We'll keep this over here. So if you turn off test mode, it'll make the uh, P5 go blank. But then in X schedule, so I just have uh, one song in here. And if we in X schedule hit play selected, you'll see on the uh, P5, it started playing the effects slash video that I have on the P5 and X lights. So um, yeah. That's kind of just the basics of it. Uh, you need to have your uh, color light cards set up with the LED vision software first before any of this, app, any of the, before you can actually use the plugin. So you have to do that manually. Um, there's some videos out there to kind of show you how to do that. Um, so if you want to try this out, I'll keep my link in the description. Uh, if you need any help, just let me know on Facebook or email me and uh, I'll gladly help you. So uh, thanks.